lot of bipolar sufferers seem to show the signs when the parents look back on it about the time that puberty starts, 14, 15 years old. And um, here, here's this model kid, a uh, honor roll student, governor's school student, just a, she had 300 community service hours before she was 18 years old. She was beautiful, she was an incredible athlete, musician, and all of a sudden, those things weren't so important anymore. Hanging out with friends <coughs> was. And we thought this was kind of weird, make this, this quick change, but maybe that was just a kid just growing up and feeling their oats. Because the kids that she was hanging around with at first, maybe, maybe not, but they weren't the kids that we would have first guessed that would be her close friends. Then, she wanted to have sleepovers. And I don't mean sleep. Now here she's 16, 17, moving to 18 years old. She wanted to have a sleepover every night. Every night. And I couldn't understand this. I thought this was the most bizarre thing. Again, here we're thinking, what in the world's going on? Well, she needed to be with people. That's the bottom line. She couldn't stand to be alone. Then we, we caught her drinking. And drinking as a teenager is not that uncommon, but when you get drink to get drunk at age 15, 16, 17, her sister once commented, Caroline doesn't drink, drink, she gets, she drinks to get drunk. She was self-medicating at this point. We're starting to see, wait, this isn't normal either. Then she started sneaking out of the house. Well, guess what? Kids sneak out of the house from time to time. Well, she made a habit of it. And sometimes she would forget to come home. And let me tell you, as a parent of a 16-year-old who's not there when you go to get her up in the morning, it's a horrible thought. In the middle of the night when you wake up to get a glass of water and go check on your children and one of them isn't there. That's horrible. Well, that wasn't enough. Carol Ann got bored of sneaking out, so she started sneaking people in. Yeah, you can joke about that all we want. But Carol Ann needed the adrenaline, she needed the endorphins, she needed the serotonin or whatever other chemicals that this risky behavior started to bring forth. And oftentimes, now looking back, this risky behavior <coughs> was greater than an average kid would have. And that led us to really look into get her in counseling, and that's when the bipolar disorder was uh, revealed. And this is, this is a difficult question to ask, but you've taken a terrible, terrible situation, a nightmare situation, and you turned it into a personal crusade to help other people. Uh, you make appearances all over the area. You're working on an interactive website that will help people. <coughs> painful experiences. What what can you do to advise folks who may encounter some of the signs that we've been talking about up here? If you could parachute in and, and deal with the situation again, how would you deal with it? First of all, in our case, and our, our focus is bipolar disorder, when you see friends that are manically excited, Carolyn used to say, I'm so hyper, I can't stand it, she would just talk and talk and talk and talk and she couldn't sleep. Her mind was rushing at 150 miles an hour, she would say. And other days, maybe this next day, she couldn't get out of bed. We'd sleep, on, sleep for days on end, it seemed. We'd have to drag her out of bed at 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. When you start to see this type of behavior or talk of suicide, now, she was asked by us, she was asked by her counselors, do you have suicidal thoughts? She said no. By the way, she was a great actress, like Nick. Um, she told her best friend, though, and even after she died, we asked her best friend if Caroline had mentioned suicide to her, and she said no. It was only two months later that she revealed that she had been lying to us. Caroline had talked about suicide. 
course, we, she thought that we'd be mad at her. We understand. You know, you don't rat on your friends. But now her best friend doesn't have a best friend. So when we see, we talk to people about what they can do, get them to see professional help as soon as possible. It might not be the psychiatrist at first, it might be a family counselor. The family counselor can probably diagnose the illness the person has. It doesn't have to be a child, it certainly can be an adult. And then if appropriate, then the suggestion may be to see a psychiatrist for medication. Carolyn was on antidepressant. And as I think we're gonna show a video here, you'll see that we took her to UVA for psychological counseling testing. This is where I get pretty passionate, folks. They tested her for eight hours and talked to us for 10 minutes. You cannot get a diagnosis, a true diagnosis of somebody's mental illness by going down a one-way street. You must interview the loved ones around them their friends, but primarily the parents, in the case of a teenager, to see what the real person's all about. They came back and said that she had depression with some anxiety. But let me tell you something, there's a lot more than that. She should have been on a mood stabilizer along with her antidepressant. She should have probably had a cocktail, and I'm not saying that that would have kept her alive, but she's dead today, and perhaps it would have helped. We are going to show a video in just a moment, but you are working on this interactive website. How is this website going to work, and what do we mean when we talk about it being interactive? Okay, we, we, we hope that this will be the most comprehensive, interactive website in the world on bipolar disorder awareness. It will have several components. One will be an area where folks can go and take an assessment or take an assessment for their children place for parents to go, a place for sufferers to potentially go. There will be a place where they can, we can go to links that have, that have experts that have for years written articles that are posted on the internet on different questions about bipolar disorder. You know, we're not going to replicate that work. We're going to have links to everyone that allow us to have links in these different high priority areas. We also, a very important part of this, will be support rooms. You might want to call them chat rooms, we're calling them support rooms. There's going to be different support rooms. One for bipolar sufferers. So they can talk to anybody at any time of the day who's going through the same problems that they're going through. Those folks who suffer from bipolar disorder may not be able to sleep at 2 o'clock in the morning. This will be a place where they can go and talk to somebody. It will be a support room for parents of bipolar sufferers, another support room for friends and, and relatives, loved ones, and lastly, and I even hate to put this one in, but I think it's so important, a support room for parents of bipolar suicide. The last part of the website will be a map of the United States. And there, somebody can go look at the state in which they reside, make that state larger, and drop a pin in the support groups, drop a pin into counselors, and that pin, when you drop your cursor over it, will open it up to their website, their telephone number, perhaps their address, and it'll be all self-fulfilling. In our ultimate world, this map will be full of pins in a couple of years. <laughs>